Hello and welcome back to our revision series on Weimar Nazi Germany from 1918 to 1939 with our focus on key topic one, the Weimar Republic between 1918 and 1929. Today we'll be looking at finishing off key topic one by looking at part four which is changes in society between 1924 and 1929. Our focus for today's content is looking at the changes of standard living, living, including the increases in wages, housing and unemployment insurance. Also looking at the changes in the position of women in work, politics and leisure. And also then looking at cultural changes with regards to the development of architecture, art and the cinema. So the first piece of content we're going to look at is a standard of living between 1924 and 1929. And we're going to focus on what happened to wages over this period. So if you were in the working classes, German workers did benefit from an increase in what's called real wages. Uh, real wages is the increase after inflation is taken into account. And so German workers in the lower classes managed to achieve a 10% pay rise in real wages between 1924 and 1929. However, there was little benefit to the middle classes. Um, particularly after hyperinflation um, be because they lost all of their savings and because they were the ones that lost most of their jobs they didn't really benefit from this increase in standard of living in terms of wages um, in terms of unemployment this did fall generally across all of Germany however it did remain high in professional areas which is areas such as teaching um, the civil service lawyers and doctors and another issue for the middle class is they didn't qualify for unemployment relief from the state. So in terms of housing, um, the government invested quite a huge amount in a housing project over the course of the 1924 to 1930 period. They used higher amounts of investment and produced tax breaks for um, building developers in order to stimulate growth in the housing market. The impact of that is that over 2 million new homes were built between 1924 and 1931, with an additional 200,000 that were rebuilt or renovated. In terms of context, the government spent 33 times more in terms of housing than they did pre-World War I. Um, so the 1929 figure was 33 times more than the 1913 figure. In addition to this, Homelessness was reduced by 50 by 60% by 1929, and so therefore, as a standard of living point of view, is that there were better quality homes for people to live in. In terms of unemployment insurance, the unemployment, ins unemployment insurance law was introduced in 1927 in order to increase benefits. However, this did require workers to contribute to a national scheme for unemployment welfare, which is very similar to what your parents would be paying with regards to national insurance contributions. There were other reforms during this time period, uh, which provided benefits to war veterans, wives of people that died during the war, single mothers and disabled. Um, and this was a stark difference to what it had been previously. In terms of the position of women, we look at three particular areas. So the first area we'll be looking at is women, women's position in terms of the political sphere. Um, as we know from looking at the first video, on the Weimar Constitution. Um, we, all women over the age of 20 were given the right to vote in 1919. And the Constitution also introduced equality in education and equal pay in the professions, particularly with the civil service. So by 1929, the, the main impact of this is that German women had the most advanced legal rights of any European country. And by 1926, there were 32 women deputies in the Reichstag, otherwise known as, as members of parliament. Um, and this was significantly more than Britain and the USA in the same time period. In terms of women in work, the proportion of women in work remained pretty much um, pretty much the same and flatlined during the Weimar period. There were, however, growing numbers of women in new areas of employment, particularly within the civil service and teaching. Um, what we have to remember is that there was a number of women in, um, in work during World War I, um, and that was mainly in heavy industry. Um, but they moved from industry into professions. But this did, however, raise the issue of, of women who were suitable for such work. Um, so in terms of the 
in terms of the World War One work or the war work that women did, uh, men came back from the war and took those jobs back, um, and they were, they tend to be better paid um, than the women were during the war. But it was also to do with the idea of what type of woman were, what type of woman was doing this work. So, for example, this tended to be more single women, or those that were divorced um, or widowed, um, as it was seen that married women who carried out such work were criticised for neglecting their homes, their husbands, and their children. There was also a significant change in terms of women regarding socialising and leisure, um, in the sense that they enjoyed much more freedom. They were allowed to go out unescorted. They were allowed to drink and to also smoke in public, which was a stark change to what it was before World War One. And they were also able to wear makeup and also cut their hair quite short. Um, this is obviously a significant difference to what it was before the war and also significantly different in the 1930s after the Nazis come to power. The last area of change to look at is the idea of how the culture changed. So we've split this into two areas. So the first area is to look at the idea of what happened with regards to art and article, architecture. So in terms of art, most Weimar Republic artists believe that art should comment on society at the time, which is otherwise known as new objectivity. There are two key painters at this time period. Uh, one is Grotz. Uh, Grotz paintings showed depressing characters in, in depressing cities. And then there was Dix, who showed the uglier side of human nature. Both were inspired by the travesties of the war period, as well as the issues of um, political instability after, uh, after 19, 1918. Um, so their art depicted that. In terms of architecture, the, the key thing to, to remember is the idea of Bauhaus. Um, so those particular architects designed um, such um such buildings as, as, as such uh designs as, as chairs kiosks and housing estates they believed in only using really basic shapes and colors and the developments of bold designs in and new materials in buildings and furniture the other area to look at with regards to cultural changes is how literature theater and cinema changed so we're going to be looking at the idea of cinema first um, this was considered to be a golden age of cinema the film Metropolis that was released during this time period uh, was the most advanced film of the decade uh, in a technical sense. In terms of literature, um, the, the period encouraged writers from both the left and the right on the political spectrum. So if we look at the right ring, the, uh, the key writer here is Spengler, who, along with many, many people from the right, were highly critical of, the, of German democracy and the German government. And on the left, the most famous one is um, a man called Remarque, um, who was very anti-war and wrote the novel All Quiet on the Western Front, which was then turned into a film later on. In terms of the theatre, there was an emergence of new operas and plays, which featured greater realism, focusing on the issues facing Germany after 1918. So there were operas and plays based on um, Germany after World War I, Germany facing political threats and up uprisings, and also the crises of 1923 in terms of the war and hyperinflation. So this is where we kind of come to the, the the key part of this of this particular episode, in the sense that this is this could be one of the most um, significant questions that actually come up. Um, so it's a twelve mark question, looking at the idea of why nineteen twenty four to twenty nine was a golden age in the Weimar Republic. Many people in the past would have viewed this question as we're going to look at the idea of how Stresemann um, changed and recovered Germany, but this question isn't actually focused on that. It's actually focused on the cultural standard of living and changes in the role of women over this period. So if this question were to come up, then we've got to think about the idea of the, of the three reasons that we'd have for, for essentially for a perfect essay. So one reason you can talk about is the increase in standard of living. And the key evidence for this would be that the wages increase for working classes by over 10%. The second reason is the idea of the reason why it's a golden age is that there was a significant change in the role of women. Um, and the key evidence for that would be that more women were in professional jobs than ever before with 100,000 teachers by the end of the time period. And a third reason is to look at the idea of cultural changes. 
So the key evidence there is the idea of talking about high quality cinema and the key bit of evidence is Metropolis and also um, novels and the key big piece of evidence there is all quite on the, rest, on the Western front. Now that's the idea of a perfect essay. However, um, having been an examiner for both Elizabeth and for Crime and Punishment, there's a key exam tip um, that, you, that you really, really need to know and really need to focus on. So for a 12 mark question, um, I wouldn't worry about giving the perfect response as what's identified in the left hand side. Examiners will credit three aspects of knowledge, i.e. three pieces of evidence, as long as it gives a reason behind it. So if you are unsure about the idea of cultural changes, but you know more about the change in the role of women over this period, then put in two aspects of knowledge of the change of the role in women. So for example, you can talk about a piece of evidence with regards to women in politics and a piece of evidence with regards to women in, in employment, and that would count as two reasons. So therefore it is actually very possible for you to talk about women in leisure, women in politics and women in employment in the same question and be able to get 12 marks out of 12 as long as you put down the key piece of evidence for employment which is stated on this slide. The key piece of evidence for women in politics would be that by 1926 there were 32 women deputies in the Reichstag and this was a high proportion in Britain or the USA. And then you can talk about the idea of leisure, uh, women in leisure, with regards to the fact they had more freedom socially and they were able to drink and smoke in public. If you are able to do that and then to explain why that leads to um, the Weimar Republic being a golden age during that time period, then that can give you 12 marks. So don't get stuck on the idea that I must do um, standard of living, women and cultural changes, as long as you've got different pieces of evidence. So again, if you look at the standard of living, you can talk about wages, housing and unemployment insurance. So there's three aspects of knowledge there. In terms of cultural changes, you can talk about a range of different things. You can talk about art as one aspect, architecture as a second aspect, theatre as a third aspect, etc, etc. So don't worry about the idea of giving reasons of standard living women and changes. OK, so that will end this particular this particular video and also this this key topic. Um, the next key topic is to look at the idea of the rise of Hitler and the Nazis. Um, so we'll be focusing on key topic two. So don't forget to like and subscribe to make sure that you are notified when those videos are uploaded.